Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to cover the basics of the user interface uh, to create and edit uh, graphs inside Reflow. One part of Reflow where you can work with graphs is the simulation flow. Let me bring the simulation flow panel here. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't know what the simulation flow is all about, uh, I can tell you that uh, this was introduced for the first time in Real Flow version 4. And the purpose of this is that uh, you can do uh, things with Python or by means of C plugins uh, during the simulation. For instance, you can filter out particles, remove particles, add uh, objects, uh, change parameter of the objects, etc. For that, uh, in Real 4, you were able to hook up Python scripts in the different stages of the simulation. Uh, at the beginning of the simulation, at the beginning of the step, at the end of the frame, etc. In Real Flow 2013, we have just spanned this uh, simulation flow uh, window, so now you can hook up uh, graphs inside the simulation flow. Graphs is a kind of a visual programming tool that allow you to do as many things that you were able to do with Python script or C++ plugins and even more. For explaining the user interface, please uh, just let me create a basic uh, simulation graph so you can grab a better idea of what I am talking about. Um, just by hitting the tab key, you will be um, able to bring nodes to the simulation graph. In this case, I'm going to do a very simple thing, which is going to be just adding two numbers together and uh, showing the result in the message panel in Realflow. So for that, I'm going to use a constant node in real, which is basically a real number. I will double click on the input pin here so I can edit the input value. In this case, for instance, yes, let me type 4.0. I'm going to create another one. In this case, I can change, I can change the number uh, on the right here in the parameters list. In this case, I'm going to just put 6 value there. I need also a math node, which is going to be the add node, and I am going just to click on the output pin and connect that to the input pin. I will need one node more, which uh, I remember the name, which is message pin, so I'm going to type here the name instead of uh, going to the categories and subcategories to look for it. Again, I will connect both and it seems that the graph is ready to work, but there is one important thing missing, which is the evaluator node. The evaluator node indicates that this branch of the simulation graph is going to be executed or evaluated. So if I just minimize a little bit this window so I can see the message from real flow down here. If I click the execute graph node, you will see here that I am getting a 10 value. So um, this button execute graph will allow you to execute the graph at this very moment. But the most important thing about the simulation flow as I explained it before is that it's going to be executed during the simulation. To show you that, just let me change the layout to the simulation flow one. And instead of the OpenGL view, I'm going to be showing here the message. So if I simulate, you will see that I am getting this uh, list of message prints because this simulation graph is evaluated at the very beginning of the frame. So now, for the viewport manipulation in the simulation graphs, uh, you have almost the same key controls and mouse uh, controls that you have for the OpenGL uh, viewport. With 
the Alt key press down and uh, left bottom mouse I can drag my view, I can pan with the mouse wheel I can zoom in and zoom out and also with the right click right click and and uh, alt key I can zoom in and out as well okay and uh, you can see down here how if the notes don't fit on my screen here uh, navigator window is going to be shown here so you can have an idea of what you are looking at also if you double click in some part of the window uh, that point where you did the double click will be the center of your uh, of your viewport after that okay so if i want this node to be shown at the center i will click here and double click here okay so and the other important uh, key was the tab key as i explained before because it will show the the node menu and another important uh, keyboard uh, key when editing and creating simulation graphs is the control key so the control key will allow you to do connections very quickly because you don't have to click exactly on the pin to con to be able to connect it to, to the other nodes by just uh, control click on every part of the node you see how the connection line is shown and you can drop this um, line everywhere in the node in this case because there are two inputs that are available for connecting a uh, contest menu will be shown so you can select which one is going to be the the one selected for the connection in this case i will select that but if i do exactly the same with the other number just control click now if i drop the connection line here for instance because there were only one input left without connections automatically reflow will connect them both together i want to mention also that for the tab menu you can type the name of the nodes you are looking for and Reaflow will automatically will try to find a node with the pattern that you are typing here you can use the blank space just to look for for nodes that have all the names that you are typing included for instance I don't know, uh, particle blank space channel will bring all the nodes that have the uh, word particle and the word channel independently of the order of the different words in the name of the node okay that's that's enough about the uh, manipulation of the of the viewport here I want to talk now about the different functions of the buttons that we have up here uh, let me start for instance with uh, this, this one which is kind of a uh, handy utility if you press this button while having a node selected here in the simulation graph uh, the nodes that are connected to it at uh, one level will be shown so if I do the same with this one only the add and the evaluator node will be shown more important than that one is the button here which will uh, show all the nodes that are going to be evaluated in this case because all the nodes are connected together and all of them are connected to the evaluator if i click on this button you see that nothing is happening but if i disconnect this node here and i do the same you see that uh, the node real zero two is not going to be evaluated during this evaluation of the simulation graph um, you can have errors and those errors are going to be listed in this uh, graph messages window okay so let me give you an example of this i'm going to create a node which is get object 
that will bring one real flow object from the scene to the simulation graph environment. I'm going to type here anything because uh, I don't have nodes and objects in my scene, so I can type whatever here. And again, I need an evaluator to be able to evaluate this branch of the graph. So if I execute the graph right now, I'm going to get, to get an error. You see that we have a red circle here in this node indicating that uh, we had an error in this, in this node. In this case, if I bring the graph messages, you will see here the, the reason of the error. You can reset the messages here. Um, I have another important note here that will bring the memory rank. Memory rank is, uh, as his name says, is just the list of the uh, um, memory consumption of every single node. It, it is going to be ordered from the node that took the most of the memory to the one that took the less. In the same fashion we have also the graph time rank here, just in this case instead of memory we are using the time. So in this case uh, message print node was the one uh, taking the most time. You can remove the list of uh, messages here um, okay. From the left to the right in these buttons, uh, the first one that we have here is this button that will allow you to just uh, do exactly the same that you were doing by using the tab key. It will bring the notes menu. So the next one uh, will bring an evaluator node to the scene. Okay, so Fair enough. The next one will just create a pass-through node to the simulation graph. More about pass-through nodes in in other videos. Yeah, for the moment, just uh, is enough to know that uh, you can create pass-through uh, nodes directly by using this button. Uh, we already used this button, which is uh, going to execute the graph at this very instant when you are clicking the button. This means this is important because this means that you are um, modifying the scene once the simulation graph has been executed. So you have uh, you need to take that into account when you are working with the simulation graph. It's very handy when you want to um, try out your simulation graphs while you are editing and you want to know if your graph is working or not. Okay. The next button will frame all nodes, so you can see all of them together. The, please notice that the nav navigator window has been uh, removed because all the nodes fit on the, on the screen right now. Oops, okay. What else? The next one uh, is in the same fashion, will frame all, only the selected nodes and uh, the other one will center the simulation graph on the selected nodes. Uh, this is interesting, this, this button here, because this uh, will allow you to, once you have been creating a, a lot of nodes, um, maybe you did a mess and put all the nodes together. So if you just right click uh, sorry, left click the nodes for selection and use this node, you will see how Realflow automatically will move uh, those nodes to empty areas. This node, sorry, this button here will allow you to create nodes. Nodes, are, we believe, are very important uh, while you are producing a simulation graph. You know, simulation graphs can get very complicated if you end up having a lot of nodes. So it's very inconvenient to have nodes and explain what are you trying to do in the different parts of the simulation graph. Just type and place the node wherever you want. You can scale the node. Uh, you can just right click on the node to change the, the color the background, the color of the text, or whatever. Okay. 
This button here will allow you to create compounds. Compounds are an important uh, thing in simulation graphs. I would say that is the cornerstone of the simulation graphs. So uh, a detailed video about what compounds are all about and how to create compounds and reuse them, etc., will be produced and will be uh, will be shown later. So um, this button here will allow you to add inputs and outputs to the compounds. So those buttons are going to be explained uh, when uh, you see the compounds video, explode the selected compound, etc. Everything related with the compounds will be explained in another different video. Um, this button here will allow you to collapse the nodes that you have selected. Collapse means that uh, all the inputs and outputs are going to be hidden. You will see only the names. And this is to explode the, the nodes that you have selected. <clears throat> this button here will allow you to add a lot of uh, different number of inputs to your node. So in the case in the case of the evaluator, it's very handy to have a different inputs. So different branches of the simulation graph are going to be uh, evaluated. <clears throat> just having one evaluator node in the scene. Um, in the same fashion, you have the other button right here that uh, will create outputs. So what's left, the last button here will allow you to change the layout of the inputs and outputs. For instance, this will put the inputs on the left and the outputs here at the bottom. Maybe it's a better idea to do the to do that with with this node so you can see how the node layout is is, is changed. Okay, uh, one last thing that I want to mention is about the help on the simulation flows, simulation graphs. We have a lot of uh, nodes and um, a good way of finding information about what the node is all about and what are the inputs, the type of the inputs, what are the outputs and the type of the outputs. You just uh, have to right click on top of the node and you will have, you will have here the, in the context menu the description option. If you select the description, the information about the node is going to be shown. In the same fashion, you can go to the to the pins, right click on the pin, the context menu will be shown. Here you can see the description of the pin. You have here all the different uh, actions that you can do on the pin. And um, for instance, the time that uh, took for the evaluation, the current value, uh, etc. You can also go to the help and uh, to the help menu and go to the online graph reference. So this will, this will bring you the, our online help for Reflow. In this case, it will take you directly to the um, Reflow Graphs Guide, where you can find a comprehensive documentation about how to work with uh, simulation graphs. Okay, um, that's all for this introduction to the user interface of the simulation graphs in Reaflow. Um, thank you.